Hey everybody, welcome to part two of my Grim Trigger Strategy and Collusion series. Part one, we laid out preliminaries, multiple time periods, discount factors, the way we put less value on future profits than present profits. Did this whole spiel about putting present values on future payoffs. The farther in the future, the less we value it and so on. What was the point of all of it? The point was that in a one-stage game between two firms competing in quantity, uh, the only equilibrium is Corno. But if we let our firms repeat their interactions over and over and over, it might be possible for them to sustain collusion as a separate equilibrium. And so in order for that to happen, uh, we have to have these multiple time periods and something called a grim trigger strategy. So here it is, the grim trigger strategy. And the strategy is this. You start by colluding in period one. If the other player colludes, collude again next time. If they betray you, then you're going to play Corno until the end of time. So start by colluding. If they collude, respond with more colluding. And if not, compete forevermore. That grim trigger strategy can be a Nash equilibrium. So we need more notation. Let's get to it. Lifetime profit for firm A. Pi A is equal to the sum I equals 1 to infinity times that. Discounted profits in each period. Lifetime profit for firm B is basically the same thing, but with a B on it. Okay. So if we look at their collusive profit, we're going to call, we're going to compare collusive profits versus the profits when A betrays B versus the profit when B betrays A versus Corno profit. Collusive profit, we'll put an M superscript on it to suggest they're splitting monopoly profits. And then the A and B subscript to say which firm they are. If A betrays B, a cheats and gets cheating profit, and B is a loser and gets loser profit. B betrays A, A is the loser, B is the cheater. And if they both, and then a corno profit, we'll just put a C on it for corno. Quick side note, if they were competing in prices instead, you would just plug in Bertrand here. Um, but whatever. So, the profit, if you cheat, is always going to be greater than monopoly profit. Sorry, than collusive profit, which is always going to be greater than competition profit, which is always going to be greater than the getting betrayed profit. So, betray the other player has the highest, even more than collusion. Collusion has more than competing via Corneau. And Corneau has more than being betrayed. So that order is also important to us. Because the fact that cheating pays more than colluding, at least for one period, gives us some temptation to want to break away from any collusive behavior. So if they, play, if they both do their Grim Trigger strategy they'll both collude repeatedly. They both start by colluding, and they answer with more colluding. Profit for firm A is equal to collusive profit plus discounted collusive profit plus double discounted collusive profit plus dot, dot, dot is the sum from I equals 1 to infinity of discounted collusive profits. Now here, I'm going to break the profit out of the sum. Since that profit is the same every time with just collusive profit, pi am, uh, I can pull it out of the summation. And what's left is actually part of a little calculus trick. It's a geometric series. And so we, I'm just going to tell you this and ask you to take my word for it. If not, go read a calculus textbook. But that summation adds to 1 over 1 minus delta. So this is... Collusive profits times 1 over 1 minus delta. Likewise for firm 2, all the same logic applies. We'll follow it all the way through. And you get collusive profits for B times 1 over 1 minus delta. 
Now, let's get some other situations. What happens if A plays the Grim Trigger strategy and B cheats? What happens? Profit for firm A. Their first period, get, they get the loser profit. And then after that, they get discounted Corneau, double discounted Corneau, and so on. Firm B, their first period, they get winner, they get cheating profit, and then they get Corneau, and then more Corneau, and so on. So all of this boils out more calculus, more geo series. By the way, with your geo series, uh, since now we have different payoffs, there's loser profit and then Corno, or cheat profit and then Corno. You're going to start your summation at i equals 2 instead of i equals 1, which means in your geo series, you now have a delta over 1 minus delta instead of a 1 over 1 minus delta. So that is important to remember. Well, if your sum is the same profit forever from one to infinity, it's just times one minus delta, one over one minus delta. If you have one profit in period one and then a different profit from period two forevermore, it looks like this. The period one profit plus delta over one minus delta times your competition profit. All right. Vice versa, if A cheats while well, play or B plays Grim Trigger Strategy, all the same ideas, only A gets the cheating profit first and B gets the loser profit first, and then they have repeated Cornell. So that kind of looks the same. So A gets cheating plus discounted Corno stream, B gets losing plus discounted Corno stream. Great. And then last if they both just play Corneau repeatedly, then it's just going to look like that. 1 over 1 minus delta times the Corneau profits. Okay, so we've gone through a lot of math. Uh, this is all kind of just preliminaries to what we wanted to get to. Uh, so hopefully you can pause and work through it if you want to. But what's coming next? When is Grim Trigger Strategy an equilibrium strategy? And that will be the topic of our next video, where I will talk about uh, best responses and firms' desire to deviate from a strategy, as well as the discount factor that makes it possible. So that part three is probably what you are all hoping to get to, and I hope it's useful. I hope this was useful too, but if not, you know, too bad. Good luck, guys. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.